It's the most popular puzzle game ever made. Since its release in 1984, the series has sold over 200 million copies, across more than 65 platforms, making it one of the best-selling video games of all time. The Game Boy version in particular is one of the most sold games period, outclassing games like Skyrim and Mario 64. This is the Tetris Iceberg. The Birth of Tetris Alexei Pajitnov was a Soviet programmer who had a dream to make people happy with computers. To quote Alexei, Games allow people to get to know each other better and act as revealers of things you might not normally notice, such as their way of thinking. Occasionally, when new equipment would be provided to him and his co-workers at the Soviet Academy of Sciences, they would write small programs in order to test the computing power. In 1984, inspired by a puzzle game from his childhood, he started work on a game that would allow players to arrange puzzle pieces in real time as they fell from the top of the screen. Originally, Alexei was going to use 12 shapes, but found that amount to be much too complicated. Eventually, he settled on the 7 that we know. While testing his game, he noticed that pieces would fill the screen far quicker than anticipated, so Alexei decided that lines would delete upon completion. Unknowingly, that simple mechanic would lead Tetris to becoming the phenomenon that it is today. Alexei shared his game with his colleagues at the Academy, and shortly afterward it spread to every office in the Academy. Soon, Tetris had found its way into every institute in Moscow that had a computer. The Electronica 60 The Electronica 60 was a computer manufactured in the Soviet Union. Most famously, this computer was where the first version of Tetris was playable on. Since there was no graphics capabilities on the device, text was used instead to represent the blocks. Who owns it? Due to a combination of Russia lacking any sort of intellectual property law for citizens, and Alexei not having any experience with business, ownership of Tetris was extremely complicated for years. Even Nintendo and Atari had a legal disagreement over who had home console rights for the game. Alexei had decided early on that he wanted, quote, everything to go smoothly, and gave the initial rights to the Soviet Academy of Sciences for 10 years. After that deal had expired, Alexei was finally making royalties off of the game he made more than 10 years prior. Now living in Seattle, Alexei founded the Tetris Company, with longtime friend and business partner Hank Rogers, and over several years, they finally acquired worldwide rights to Tetris. Tetris Piece Names the Tetris pieces themselves are called tetraminos, which are named after a term used in mathematics. Tetraminos are defined as polyaminos made of four square blocks. Each piece is typically assigned a letter for their individual names, I, O, T, S, Z, J, and L. In 2019 though, Twitter user at Vikito posted an image of the original instruction booklet for Tetris and pointed out something interesting. The tetraminos were given strange names like Blue Ricky and Rhode Island Z. This led most other users to assume these were the original names of the pieces. It was later revealed to be a convincing hoax, but not before the game show, Jeopardy, added this misinformation to a question. Tetris Guidelines As of 2001, the Tetris company has strict guidelines that must be followed in order for a Tetris game to be approved for release. The rules have gone through several iterations, the most recent set being updated in 2009. The guidelines include things like the colors that are assigned to each piece, as well as the width and height of the playfield. Some of the more obscure rules include mandatory control layouts for TV remotes, or older cell phones, if the version is compatible with those. A Russian Classic The main Tetris theme, Type A, is actually more than 100 years older than Tetris itself. In 1861, Russian poet Nikolai Nekrasov wrote, Korobiniki, which quickly became a popular Russian folk song due to its simple and fast tempo. It's easy to understand why Alexei Pajitnov, a Russian himself, chose this classic song as a track for his game. Tetris Effect Tetris Effect is a condition attributed to people who devote so much attention to an activity that they are unable to stop thinking about it. The activity will begin to spend more time in their thoughts, dreams, and even will show up involuntarily in their visual fields, even though they're not performing it. It's named for the obsession that some people develop with Tetris, but it is known to occur with Rubik's Cubes, Jigsaw Puzzles, and other video games. The name of this condition was given to the 2018 game of the same name. Made as a sort of celebration of the phenomenon, it combines beautiful visuals and music with the traditional Tetris gameplay. It even includes a VR mode for players who want a more personal experience. Puyo Puyo Tetris this is a series of games that incorporate the Puyo Puyo characters and gameplay with Tetris. You're able to play each game individually or both at the same time in the fusion mode. 
In the second game, several enhancements and game modes were added, and Sonic himself even makes a playable appearance. Weltris Weltris is referred to as the first ever Tetris sequel. The familiar Tetris gameplay is still featured, but the game board has been extended into the third dimension. While reviews seemed favorable at the time, Weltris slowly fell into obscurity. A game with this type of gameplay was attempted again with 3D Tetris, but this game was received poorly, on top of being released as one of the final games on the commercial failure that was the Virtual Boy. Hattris Hattris is another game created by Alexei Pagetnov. The goal of this game is to place hats on the heads of these men at the bottom of the screen. When you've placed five hats of the same kind in a row on a person's head, they'll fall off onto a conveyor belt and give you some points. Clearly this puzzle game did not catch on nearly as well as Tetris, because there are no versions past the initial ones created back in 1990. Tetris 2 Tetris 2 for the NES, also called Tetris Flash in Japan, is a 1993 game that, despite the names, isn't really anything like Tetris. Rather than the typical Tetris gameplay, this game instead plays more like Dr. Mario, which released three years earlier. Blocks will descend from the top of the screen, and the objective is to match their colors with the garbage on the screen, rather than make lines. Tetris Attack Tetris Attack is a Super Nintendo game that is not really a Tetris game. It is a puzzle game originally known as Panel de Pan in Japan. You may know of that title from the item lipstick in the Super Smash Bros. series. The international version of the game was renamed to Tetris Attack, and visuals were completely altered to include characters from Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Reportedly, Tetris Company co-founder Hank Rogers said that he regretted giving Nintendo permission to use the Tetris name. Tetris World's Combo Pack Released for 6th generation consoles, Tetris Worlds was another iteration of the puzzle game. The Xbox version in particular was developed by Radical Entertainment, and was included with the Star Wars Clone Wars game on a single disc. This unique game disc was bundled with the Xbox system itself. Competitive Tetris Competitive Tetris can be traced back to 1990, during the Nintendo World Championships, where one of the games included in the competition was NES Tetris. The modern resurgence of the competitive scene started back in 2010, when the first classic Tetris World Championship was held. Starting in 2012, the competition started being held at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo in Oregon, until 2020 when it was changed over to an online format. Typically, NES Tetris is the most played version in competition, due to its lack of newer mechanics and unique difficulty. Outside of official competition, many players stream high-score attempts and practice on their Twitch channels, constantly pushing each other to even greater heights. The Current World Record as of the recording of this video, the NES Tetris high score is a staggering 2,340,240 by Cheese, achieved at the end of November 2021. This shattered the previous record of 1,676,400, set by Huffilufagus. The reason for such an insane jump in the world record is due to the advent of a brand new style of play, called rolling. For years, players have either played with Das, which is the way that most of you at home play Tetris, or with hypertapping, which requires players to tap their fingers on the D-pad very quickly, in turn making it faster than holding the button down. Rolling is a technique that has been theorized for years, but finally perfected by Cheese himself. The idea is to position your hands in such a way where you hit the bottom of the controller quickly, so the D-pad knocks into your fingers. This allows players to play almost twice as fast as with hypertapping. This record may only just be the beginning of a new age of Tetris world records, by pushing the boundaries of what is humanly possible. Jonas Neubauer Considered by many to be the best to ever grace the competitive Tetris scene, Jonas Neubauer was a seven-time world champion. His achievements don't stop there. In 2006, he became one of the first to max out the game's score counter at 999,999. In 2008 he also performed one of the first ever max outs, while starting on level 19, the hardest starting difficulty in the NES game. Most importantly, he was a kind and welcoming figure in the community at large. Tragically, on January 5, 2021, Jonas passed away due to a sudden and unpreventable cardiac arrhythmia. Support poured out from the community, and to honor his memory, the trophy for the 2021 Tetris World Championships was altered to be a Golden J piece, and was renamed to the Jonas Nubar Trophy. Tetris Film Typically, in order for a game to have a film adaptation, you need to have a recognizable character like Mario or Sonic, but interest in a Tetris film seems to be higher than you might think. 
in 2014, it was announced that Tetris, the movie, was being developed by Threshold Entertainment. The film was intended to be the first in a sci-fi trilogy, but nothing ever came of it. In 2020, a Tetris biopic was announced for the Apple TV Plus streaming service, to be directed by John S. Baird. This film is currently in production, and the premise revolves around the development and eventual release of Tetris. Easy Spin The Easy Spin, or Infinity, is a technique in newer Tetris games where the player is able to delay a Tetramino from locking into place by rotating it. You can potentially keep a piece active forever using Easy Spin. It's infamous among more hardcore players for being a mechanic that makes the game far easier than normal. It's worth noting that many of the newer Tetris games incentivize speed by giving extra points or allowing you to send extra garbage to opponents if you play faster. Tetris DX Wall Climb In the Game Boy Color game Tetris DX, there's an exploit that exists which allows you to make pieces climb back up the side of the wall. Due to the changes in the rotation system in this game, if you position any piece other than the O piece on a wall and spin it in the opposite direction, it will slowly gain height. Mario and Luigi Cameo when playing in the two-player mode on Tetris for the Game Boy, players are represented by small portraits of Mario and Luigi. Unused Song In Tetris on the NES, this unused track is found in the game data. It's the first track listed, which means that this could have possibly been meant for the title screen, which is normally silent. The Heaven Polyamino This refers to the concept put forth by Randall Munro in a short web comic on his blog, XKCD. In the image, he has drawn what can only be described as a Tetris heaven. A piece is generated which is the exact shape and size needed to clear every single line from the lowest opening to the highest column. Fans refer to this as the heaven block, or the heaven polyamino. The New Tetris Rants The New Tetris is a version of Tetris created for the Nintendo 64 by H20 Entertainment. It's a fairly unassuming game on the surface, but the developers left several secrets in the game. David Pretty, one of the programmers, was so angry with how development on the game went, that he slipped in a 1,000-word rant into the code. In the rant, David insults the producer of the game within the first two sentences of starting. DN, my god, is this guy useless or what? I don't hate you DN, but you suck, and I mean suck as a producer. You should go back to testing video games, but I doubt you could even manage that properly. I feel sorry for you. During this project you just sat around and played video games, StarCraft and EverQuest. Don't even deny that. When you were working, it was making stupid Excel spreadsheets to try and tell me how many bugs I had left to fix on a graph, like WTF is that. He goes on to insult other co-workers, but interestingly compliments Nintendo, saying quote, It has been nice working with you. A lot of you are great, or were great. He ends his tirade by saying goodbye, and that he plans on leaving H20 Entertainment to go and work at 3DO. This message was one among many left in the new Tetris. Others include a set of profanity-filled hidden credits, and several other shorter rants. David thought that he could slip some of these in, and they wouldn't be discovered for years to come. They were found after three days of the game's release. He ended up getting both himself and H20 Entertainment into trouble with Nintendo. Sadly, David passed away only a year and a half after the release of the new Tetris. He's forever immortalized in Tetris history as a savage programmer. I think he would have loved that. Despite its simple nature, Tetris continues to garner support to this day, even while the industry standard moves towards more graphically impressive and expansive games. The series shows no signs of slowing down, and with the recent release of the connected expansion for Tetris Effect, it's going to be very interesting to see where the series goes from here. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and let me know what subjects you'd like to see covered next.